What's your thoughts on government cover-ups or covert societies attempting to control humanity? Do you believe in ancient astronauts, intergalactic communication, or extraterrestrial visitations? Ever had an experience with disembodied spirits or the paranormal universe? Are these subjects fact or fiction? Each week, Tony and Eddie explore these unbelievable realities and beyond. Exclusively on Truth Be Told. Hello and welcome to Truth Be Told with Tony and Eddie. I'm your host, Tony Sweet. And I'm Eddie Connor. Here at Truth Be Told, Tony and I love to talk about new topics that we never get to hear about on mainstream media. Today's subject an ancient race of little people as the catalyst for the emergence of the first known civilizations. Here to speak about the little people is author Susan Martinez. In the book, The Lost History of the Little People, she explains how the mounds of North America and Ireland were not burial sites, but the homes of the little people. I can't wait to find out more about this, Tony. Now, Susan is a writer, linguist, teacher, paranormal researcher, and recognized authority on the OSP Bible with a doctrine in anthropology from Columbia University. Her other books include Delusions in Science and Spirituality, Time of the Quickening, and The Mysterious Origins of Hybrid Man. Please welcome to the show author Susan Martinez. <laughs> Susan, welcome to the show. Hello. Hello, everybody. We are so excited that you are here with us today. Um, this is a subject that, you know, that Eddie and I strive to talk about, you know, stuff that we don't get to talk about that often. We talk about UFOs and everything else, but this is something that, we, honestly, we've never talked about before. That's true. So before we get started, we always tell the people, our guests that hasn't been on the show before, what what one thing I think a lot of people miss out on is is your journey is how you got to the point you are today of writing your books and the, even just being interested in the subjects that you've written about. So tell us about how Susan, you know, a little girl growing up, and we'll find out where you grew up, and how did you get into the 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 anthropology and all the uh, uh, this type of field? I guess. Oh uh, gosh. Um I hate uh, talking about myself. <laughs> well, we want to hear about it. We, we love Susan. But um, if you haven't already figured it out, I'm from Brooklyn, New York. <laughs> uh, that's where I was born um, during uh, World War II. Um, it, uh, my parents, I, I grew up in a Jewish family. Uh, my parents uh, were uh, musicians. Um, I, I'm sure I was the first person in the family to get a, um, an advanced, uh, degree, but, um, uh, the other factor is that, um, my parents were, uh, okay, they were atheists. Oh. Let's, let's call a spade a spade, That's you know? <laughs> That's right. Let's put it on the table. Yeah, um, but um, um, so I was in uh, nowhere land for a long time growing up. But when I grew up, I uh, uh, got more interested in uh, finding finding out the truth. And uh, eventually, I found the OSB Bible, and that, that's the truth that uh, I uh, follow today. And had been a, a student of OSB for. Uh, 35 years maybe by now. Uh, it's a, a spiritual Bible, but uh, on the other hand, it also has new uh, scientific revelations and also revelations about the records of man, oh. uh, the uh, early history of our uh, species on the planet. Uh, and so uh, a lot of my topics have been informed by the uh, revelations in Oaspe, but on the other hand, um, I, I was trained as an anthropologist, so I, uh, I, I know what the standard model is about, mm -hmm. uh, and I, I know uh, how to go about uh, research, and I've been following uh, 
paranormal and fringe topics for about 40 years. Wow. 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 You don't, when I look at your picture, I'm like, yeah, you don't I, look. And I uh-uh. was like, you said in the World War II, I was like, wow, you well, look great. We touched it up. Oh. <laughs> 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 well, okay, one, one question that popped into my head, you know, we know the Bible of, you know, of, of the Christianity, and we know kind of the, the era that it was written, the people that wrote it. The New uh, and Old Testaments. The New and Old Testaments. But Waspe, who, who, who created it? Who wrote it? What era was it in when that when it was created? Uh, I'll tell you what. Uh, it came out in 1882. Mm-hmm. Um, the amanuensis, which is really the proper word for the uh, person who channeled it, be, it because he uh, he typed it uh, by a process of automatic uh, typing. Mm-hmm. The typewriter. The typewriter had just come out. The uh, first Remington mm-hmm. in the 1870s. Um, no one ever heard of him, but um, I did. I wrote a, a biography of Dr. Nubro. That is, that's the man who was the amanuensis of Owaspe, uh, which came through uh, by virtue of a uh, uh, 33 uh, separate legions uh, of angels, each uh, hmm. particular to the uh, time uh, that was being uh, revealed. There are 33. 36 books within Alaska. It's the newest Bible in the world. Um, the biography I wrote of Dr. Nubo is called The Hidden Prophet, and it's available on Amazon. I had to publish it. I had to self-publish it uh, because, of course, nobody nobody is interested or knows about it except for the faces. So faces is the name of the uh, people today in today's world and in the uh, world before uh, who uh, who um, are uh, subscribed right. uh, to what's given in Owaspe. Hmm. There have always been faiths uh, on the planet. The little people who we're going to talk about right. them yes. uh, were the uh, first uh, faiths on Earth. Really? So, okay, that, now this kind of leads into, you know, why you're here is, is uh, the little people. I mean, we've, I've kind of heard about it before, but they don't really talk about it much in history books or even a lot of the people that we are archaeological, uh, you know, archaeologists. Archaeolog- I can't even say it. Archaeologists. There we go. Uh, they don't really talk about it that much. You're one of the f- first people that I find that really are open to making this really a whole show yeah and we did have uh, go ahead susan sorry no you go ahead eddie oh i was going to say we have spoken to a gentleman who spoke about uh the giants the giants right yeah and uh and but we unfortunately didn't have him on for the whole show and we're dying to find out about the little people so let me ask you right up front will you sort of give us an idea or a definition your personal definition of the little people and their origin and that sort of thing, Susan? Um, Well, it doesn't uh, need a definition beyond the fact that they were, in fact, little, uh, which means um, three feet tall. Um, The topic, uh, I'm willing to say that the topic has been suppressed. Um, Just as every key element in every science of man has been uh, suppressed. Um, um, th- th- there are probably a lot of reasons for that. Uh, one of them is that it does not, the revelation of the little people, the full story, uh, does not uh, conform uh, to our, our present, <coughs> excuse me, mm-hmm. uh, uh, our present requirements for materialist science. Um, in my more recent book, um, I use a shorthand for materialist uh, science, SIMAT. Uh, SI stands for scientific and MAT for materialism. So SIMAT stands for scientific materialism. Uh, every field is plagued with this, and every field is li- limited uh, hmm. by it. Uh, the little people had a... Uh, you could definitely say a paranormal origin here on Earth. Their, uh, their DNA, uh, their bodies came here from elsewhere. Um, the whole scenario, which is painted out in the book, uh, is so, um, uh, I don't 
I don't know what adjective to use to describe something that goes uh, just beyond uh, the physical experience that we know about and that our uh, empirical sciences demand. Mm -hmm. Um, So they don't fit uh, the paradigm uh, and uh, they don't fit what's been said about the uh, 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 fossil record. They don't fit Darwinism. They don't fit uh, the Holy Bible. So Mm -hmm. um, scrap that, you know, just make them a footnote to uh, history. Uh, quite the reverse, they are the keynote uh, to uh, the race mm. of uh, Homo sapiens. They were the first uh, sapient uh, creatures on Earth. <clears throat> if I'm going to be uh, honest, I'm going to tell you that their uh, origin on Earth, that I, I got that story from Oaspe. Mm. Uh, however, um, uh, no matter where I get anything, I... Uh, uh, my effort as a researcher is to corroborate what I found, and I have found uh, in the record of uh, many peoples around the world uh, that the first and the earliest people in their domain were little, little people. And the book chronicles that. And that book that we're talking about, everybody, if you're just tuning in, we have Susan Martinez with us. She's the author of The Lost History of the Little People. The subtitle is Their Spiritually Advanced Civilization Around the World. And I like how you say they're not a footnote, they're a keynote. Then what is it in their DNA, in your opinion, Susan, that makes them spiritually advanced as a civilization? Um, are they... Uh when they uh, came to Earth, they actually came as, as spiritual beings, but they took on uh, corporeal bodies. Uh, in other words, um, if, if you look at the uh, starting point in their history, uh, they, uh, they were spirits who had uh, died in infancy on other worlds. Oh, wow. Uh, uh, they, were, uh, they, were, they came together as a volunteer uh, corps. The Great Spirit called out uh, for the volunteers to come to Earth uh, and uh, uplift uh, the, uh, the um, lowly type of human that existed on the planet. So um, what I will add to that is that the very first uh, race on our planet, uh, and this is uh, not millions of years ago, but... Um, uh, 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 80,000 years ago, mm. the very first race was a, uh, um, equivalent uh, to uh, what the physical anthropology knows as the Australopithecus of Africa. We have fossil specimens of that uh, earliest race. They place it millions of years ago, but I think that's a, a phony date. Uh, I think it was less than 100,000 years ago. In any case, that first race, which uh, Owaspe calls Asu, uh, and uh, the um, anthropologists call Australopithecus or Artipithecus, um, uh, dug up in Africa, um, they were the very primitive uh, type. They lived in trees. Hmm. Uh, They did not have a, a truly human form of uh, communication, uh, but most of all, they did not have the light of heaven upon them. They lived an animal-like uh, existence. Uh, so, and the Great Spirit wanted to see uh, things get uh, rolling here on this planet. So he called for volunteers, and um, those who came uh, were. Um, those who came uh, were uh, supposed to act in the role of uh, teachers. Mm. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is probably where the Adam and Eve story comes from, because um, in addition to acting as uh, teachers, um, they um, they took on uh, human bodies. It, it was a time in the earth when that was possible. It's, it's no longer possible. They took on human bodies, and uh, they broke the rules. They intermarried with the uh-huh. Asu type. And that was the first case of a hybridized man. Oh. And uh, the offspring that came 
of that interbreeding were the little people, uh, uh, otherwise known as the Ihen uh, race. Uh, they were uh, white skinned. Uh, they had white hair or yellow hair. They were fine boned. Um, and uh, they were still had the spiritual nature uh, on them. They were in constant communion with uh, the angel world. And uh, but from that point on, um, the crossbreedings continued and continued and continued. And that's how we get so many uh, different types uh, in in the fossil record. Uh, I wrote as a um, sequel to the Little People a book about. Uh, evolution, and I, I jumped on the whole idea. I don't see anything evolving. All I uh, see and all I found was uh, cross mixing. Hmm. So, well, okay. I'm, I'm gonna since you're a paranormal researcher, and we've you know had a lot of people on before about before. ancient history, uh, about the Anunnaki. Uh, is there any type? Uh, do you, if I mean, do you believe in the Anunnaki? And if you do, do you think it was around the same time, or they had an influence with the little people? Um, well, um, I gotta be honest with you. Um, I, I take all that literature with a grain of salt. Um, I don't go to the ancient Sumerians for my revelations. Hmm. Yeah. Um, and uh, I have. Uh, two opinions on um, y UFOs. Let me tell you that, that those opinions, and then you know we'll just spin off from there to answer your question. I'll okay. probably ask you to repeat the question by the time <laughs> I'm done. You know, That's but all right. um, okay, uh, I feel quite certain that there are two ways to account for um, uh, UFOs. Uh, number one. Um, uh, fire ships of the Ethereans, the angel world uh, puts together out of etheric uh, a substance, uh, puts together ships in order to uh, visit our planet. Um, okay, number two, I'm just summarizing here. Okay. Uh, secret uh, government projects. Um, in fact, I believe that the, <laughs> I think the government governments are getting a big kick out of our uh, a UFO and ET uh, theorizing uh, because it does very well to hide their own projects, which they want to remain uh, secret. So as I say, I think it's either something that uh, mankind has developed but uh, kept uh, concealed uh, or, in fact, the uh, fire ships of the gods. Hmm. The fire ships um, of the gods. Okay, now I'm supposed to get back to... okay. I do indeed need to be refreshed uh, on the original question. Well, it, I mean, it kind of—I mean, you really almost answered it. But yeah. uh, the Anunnaki, and if if they had an influence uh, oh, over the okay. little people. All right, this uh, business of uh, ancient astronauts. Right. Are we are we in the uh, ballpark there? Yeah, pretty yes. much. <laughs> yeah. Okay, the business of ancient astronauts. I take tongue in cheek. I don't uh, think it's a literal uh, fact. Um, in in my own knowledge, it is a fact that uh, the Ethereans have been uh, visiting the Earth from time to time, uh, sometimes at uh, particular uh, uh, occasions in, in cycles, uh, and um, and their uh, their uh, Ether Ethereian ships. Uh, have been mistaken for physical uh, ships, uh, but at no time, uh, I do not believe that at any time uh, corporeal beings landed on this earth. Uh, it was primarily in the early days through the little people, through their constant communion uh, with the angel world, uh, that there were apparitions and there were uh, phenomena uh, uh, paranormal uh, phenomena, but but not not a, uh, a corporeal being coming from an, another planet. There there have been spirits from other planets that have influenced our own. Hmm. And so, when these spirits, as uh, you're helping us understand, as these spirits come to the Earth plane and 
uh, and we see them or experience them. Are they physical spirits or holographic or multidimensional or three dimensional? Um, okay. Um, um, uh, pe- there, there are uh, two kinds of people and a- every other kind in the gray area. Okay. Uh, but to uh, put it at the two extremes, there are people uh, like myself who have no um, uh, no clairvoyant um, uh, talents. And then there are people at the other um, end of the spectrum who are clairvoyant and clairaudient and are capable of seeing uh, uh, spirit beings. Okay, so uh, the more uh, clairvoyant, uh, the more sensitive uh, a person is, the uh, more likely they are to be able to perceive uh, a, a, be- a being who is, uh, does not, who is not living in our world. Okay, okay, I totally get that. So I want to go back to something about the little people. I, I love your question about the Anunnaki, mm-hmm. by the way, and, and Susan, we also really like your answer. Um, with the little people, whenever you said, I, I'm going to paraphrase if I may, and you, you're welcome to correct me. So when the great creator asked, uh, put out a call to the universe, I'm paraphrasing, and then for souls to come to the earth plane and to get the things moving on the earth plane, is that right? That is right. Okay, and then so the, Good so- job, Eddie. the souls that came forth were the souls of the little people, and if I understand it correctly, they were souls that were... Bo- that were going to be born in another part of the universe but did not fully manifest there, and they came here to get the ball rolling. Is that right? Yeah, that is right. Okay. Um, and uh, uh, because they were uh, infants uh, or stillborn or, or, you know, in that category, um, the DNA was uh, 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 somewhat uh, immature, and so they were very pale. Uh, very lacking in uh, skin tone, mm. uh, and very little. Um, I have a, a colleague who, who works in California um, with a website that is so... Um, it's the only OASPE website that I recommend, and wow. there are plenty plenty of them, believe me. Um, it's called studyofawaspe.com, and um, the guy is uh, Mike... Michael James McGill, and um, he has done the most um, wonderful uh, research and uh, on all of the Arasbe topics uh, that interest us, and has recently um, confirmed this business of bringing uh, uh, of, of of Homo sapien DNA having been brought uh, to our planet. Um, he's got more to say on the topic actually than I do because. Uh, He's, uh, in, uh, in the last couple of years, researched this and written it down on his website. Uh, I'll repeat it, studyofawaspe.com. Uh, okay. um, um, you see, I wrote uh, the Little People book um, more than five years ago, uh, but uh, Mike's research is up to date. Um, and if uh, anybody wants to check it out, let me give the spelling of Awaspe. It's O-A-H-S-P-E. Beautiful. It's like namaste, but pronounced awaske. Awaspe. Awaspe. Awaspe, right. Hey, thank you. Um, So give us an idea of now we have the little people on planet Earth, and they're here, and obviously they're little, no pun intended. So what are some of their uh, strengths or their, like when you think of little people today, you think of the, the politically incorrect word is midgets, and then the politically correct word today is actually little people. So these little people, this race, this community uh, was about three feet tall. And so how did they, were they very mobile? Is that part of their like strength is, uh, were they super telepathic? Were they clairvoyant, clairaudient? Um, Were they really in harmony with the rhythms of nature? What kind of strengths and positive aspects did they have? And be, Susan, before you answer that, we're going to take a break for oh. our, our sponsor, and I think that's a good segue to kind of yeah. shoot the second segment off. So if you don't mind, we're going to take a quick break. Uh, we're talking with Susan Martinez. Eddie, you want to tell the name of the book? Absolutely. It's called The Lost History of the Little People, Their, Spiritu- their Spirituality 
their spiritually advanced civilization around the world. And we're going to take a quick break from our sponsor. This is Truth Be Told with Tony and Eddie. I'm Tony Sweet. I'm Eddie Connor. And we're going to be right back in one minute. Thanks, You suffer from anxiety, from depression, maybe even chronic pain. Well, listen up. Truth Be Told is going to tell you about a breakthrough program built on over 100 years of therapies used in America's returning veterans to help you successfully overcome PTSD, anxiety attacks, pain, and depression. The secret proven in study after study. Music therapy. The effects of music are nothing short of amazing. From strokes to PTSD, music has been shown to improve the quality of life. Now one of the latest music therapy programs being used in America's veteran hospitals can be yours to experience for free at home and to help your own anxiety attacks, pain, and depression. Or just relax after a hard day. It's called Whole Tones. It takes music therapy to a new level. This revolutionary program makes use of specifically designed frequencies that have been shown to stimulate your body's natural healing power down to a cellular level. If it works for battle-scarred vets, can it work for you? Well, experience it for yourself for free at SweetWholeTones.com. Like Tony Sweet, that's S-W-E-E-T. Go to SweetWholeTones.com. Now enjoy the show. All right, welcome back to Truth Be Told with Tony and Eddie. I'm Tony Sweet. I'm Eddie Connor. And we are here with the amazing author, uh, Susan Martinez. She wrote a book called The Lost History of the Little People, the, their spiritual advanced, uh, spiritually advanced civilization around the world. And uh, when we left, Eddie had a, a great question, and I'm going to let now Susan answer it. So, Eddie, go ahead and remind the yeah. question. Yes, yeah, Susan. Uh, I remember. Oh, oh, I remember the question. Yay! Uh, what? It, it was a long question. Let me save you the breath. <laughs> so, um, they were known as the, um, the sacred little people among some tribes. They were known as the little people of peace uh, among other tribes. Um, they Let me define them, first of all, negatively, which is to say oh. uh, they had no uh, evil in them. They had no uh, war. They were the peaceful little people. And, you know, when you look at Africa and you look at the center of Africa, they're always in the interior, by the way. Uh, They're they're remnants, Uh uh, uh, their offspring. They're always in the interior. Uh, You look at the um, pygmies of the Congo. um, They were never a warring people either. And neither were any of the enclaves of uh, uh, little people who... Uh, persisted uh, until the 19th and 20th and 21st uh, century. There are, they are uh, the, they're still in the gene pool. Uh, the, there are little people everywhere, including in our own country. Uh, so uh, that's it, the little uh, people of peace. Uh, as far as uh, their contribution, they, um, they started out as... Um, uh, you know, they had died in infancy uh, in their former uh, existence on other planets, and so uh, they had uh, no knowledge. They didn't know nothing. Uh, hmm. But in time, okay, the first thing to consider is that there were immediate uh, crossbreeding of races so that um, the, the next generation you'll find there's uh, a, a mixed type with a, a lot of little people genes and some Asu genes. And then the next generation, there'll be a mixture of, of all those types. So it's just a matter of, uh, of uh, uh, having some of those genes. But uh, the um, races uh, who, the little people, for one thing, were um, mandated to live apart uh, so that their uh, genes would not be lost. And so in much of uh, this history, uh, they were a a separate people. And you find this in the ethnographic record. You find this in the folklore of uh, people's uh, tribes all around the world who remember the little people, Mm -hmm. uh, that they uh, lived uh, separately. Uh, But at a a certain point in time, uh, not too long after their advent on Earth, uh, they... Uh, they had no knowledge of themselves, but they received knowledge, how to plant, how to heal, you know, how to travel, uh, all these things. They received that uh, knowledge from their uh, spirit, spirit mentors. 
uh, on the other side. Uh, and some of it became kind of sacred, uh, sacred uh, private uh, knowledge, but some of it uh, was shared with the world. And the, uh, the um, people of learning in the very ancient day, uh, they, they were people who, who, learned, uh, who learned those arts and sciences uh, from, the, uh, from the telepathic powers hmm. of the little people. Well, that, okay, uh, you said that the, they were mostly uh, geographic, geographically in Africa. Uh, was there ever any uh, migration to any other parts of the world at that time? Have they found any, uh, have they found any um, uh, remnants or, um, you know, bodies or, or corpses anywhere else in the world? And if, if not, what... Is there any any DNA that we know of left of the little people? Because you know, there's uh, with DNA findings now. You know, you can kind of tell if you have a connection with uh, you know distant past. So have we have we found out if their DNA actually survived uh, yeah. into uh, t- today? There, there there are little people um, populations uh, on almost every uh, continent to this uh, day. Uh, but um, the, uh, your question um, actually um, brings me to um, my next book, which is coming out in uh, uh, this winter, oh. this coming winter, and it's called uh, The Lost Continent of Pan. And that is about the uh, continent in the Pacific Ocean uh, that uh, was submerged. 24,000 years ago. Oh. And if I can answer your question in um, a few words rather than a few thousand words mm-hmm. uh, or uh, tens of thousands of words, um, mm-hmm. uh, it, 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 this is what it is. Um, this is. This is just a, that book in a nutshell. Uh, the continent went down, calling it the continent of Pan, otherwise known as Mu, sometimes incorrectly known as Lemuria, Mm. but the continent in the Pacific Ocean that went down 24,000 years ago Mm. with um, many millions of people perished, and the only survivors were the little people. Uh, They were still in contact with uh, with the powers on the other side, and they were warned of the coming... Uh, submergence. Uh, they were told to build ships. They were told how to build ships, uh, and they escaped. And they um, dispersed to the uh, to five places on Earth, so that uh, it's not just uh, Africa that was one of the places, uh, but it's also uh, Asia and America and uh, <coughs> Japan and so on. Um, what the um, Christian Bible talks about with the sons of Noah. Uh, being, I was going to say uh, that sounds almost like Noah's Ark. <laughs> it is. This yeah. is the whole. This is the true story behind uh, Noah's Ark. Noah uh, represents the original forefathers mm-hmm. of the Ihan people, of the little people on the continent of Pan. Uh, Shem, uh, the son Shem went to Asia. The son Ham went to Africa. The son Japheth, I'm sorry, Shem went to the Middle East. Uh, Japheth uh, went to Asia and China. Uh, uh, those are the names we know from the Bible. And is this is this is this, is this where it explains the red-haired Caucasian mummies? Oh yeah, I mean those are uh, mixings as well, uh, okay. because uh, they had the uh, uh, Caucasian um, uh, lightness of. Uh, Skin, skin color, and right. uh, light and bright hair, uh, but uh, they have the body type of uh, some of the uh, non uh, ihan people, the some of the uh, tribal people from uh, from each part of the world. That's uh, that's fascinating. It that is, is fascinating. fascinating, and uh, so I want to ask you about the burial mounds. There's we have been taught for decades that the burial mounds in Ireland 
and in North America are actual burial mounds. But what we're learning from you, Susan, is that they are not burial mounds. They are connected to the little people. And if I'm not mistaken, they are homes for the little people. Yeah, they were certainly homes, and that can be um, uh, particularly highlighted in um, wherever the mounds are flat-topped, um, and that, and you can find that in Ireland, and you can find that in America, uh, in South America as as well. Um, um, uh, uh, whatever I had, um, I, whatever I had, just jumped out of my brain. Oh, that's easy. <laughs> that happens a lot. I've oh, I've seen time. burial mounds in China. I've seen them in North America. I've seen oh, the- I know what I was going to say. Um, okay, here's the deal. Um, they were they were the sacred little people all over the world. We we can confirm that, uh, and they had some of the secrets of heaven, which the um, more uh, materialist powers, the uh, emperors and, and uh, 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 potentates of your were interested in getting. Um, if you go back far enough, you reach a time in the world when uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, kings and potentates uh, wanted to get that knowledge from the little people and they because they still had their reputation as the most perfected men on earth um so what happened was that after a certain horizon maybe uh uh, somewhere around the neolithic um uh, when the the little people started um started um uh, uh, uh becoming extinguished on earth um, I didn't use the right word. What is the right word? Uh, uh, you know, the races were dying. The mm-hmm. races were di- started uh, dying out. Uh, at that point, uh, mythology took over and made them into the uh, fairy kingdoms. Uh, also, see, they're, the way they lived separate, remember I said they lived yes. separate? The way they lived separate was to live on high mounds, um, which they reached by ladders, and then they pulled in the ladders by night, so they could be reached neither by uh, conquering armies or by uh, predatory animals. There are a lot of them in, in the um, in Mesolithic. Um, so you see, um, the try to try to imagine that the the high mounds were the icon of the greatest people on earth. And so, as the little people were dying out, and mythology was turning it, them into the fairy kingdom and and leprechauns and all kinds of cartoonish. Uh, things. Um, the powers that be uh, took over the, the sacred mount, um, and uh, eventually they turned them into uh, uh, a mausolea, into burial places for uh, ambitious kings. You know, to mm-hmm. you know, grandiosity and all that. Uh, but the origin of, of the mounds is simply the uh, home. Uh, the uh, removed home uh, of the sacred little people. They were not burial places at all. Well, I would love to see a diagram if if it's ever been found. Uh, I I know the the burial mounds have been found. I would love to see a diagram if there's uh, uh, one that exists of what the mounds look like on the inside. Is there? Have you ever seen anything like that, Susan? Uh, uh, yeah, um, the uh, uh, the sacred little people lived on the mounds and in the mounds. Okay. Uh, that's a quote uh, I've uh, taken. Uh, they so they lived on the mounds, which means they uh, did utilize the uh, top, mm-hmm. uh, the flat top uh, of the mounds, uh, but they also lived inside. Hmm. Um, and so uh, there uh, should be uh, living spaces, um, you know, once you climb down in, into the scooped out uh, mountain, uh, uh, which is where they slept by night. And by day, they used uh, their ladders to climb down and work their uh, fields. Wow. It, it is interesting to see how, of course, history and mythology and other writers have taken 
taken the little people and then morphed them into the pans, the gnomes, the fairies, the leprechauns. That's pretty fascinating to me. I was going to ask you about that, to be honest with you, because I wanted to know if there was actually any sort of correlation between the little people that you're wonderfully describing to us and the fairies, the gnomes, and the pans. But now I know. Well, yeah, the fairies are the mythologized uh, version of the actually historical, or should I say uh, prehistorical uh, race of little people. <clears throat> and, you know, uh, I'm going to say something to you guys that I've never said. Ooh, uh, we like on, that. Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> but I've never said on the radio before. But what the heck, you know? Uh, uh, I, I want I want to say what I'm thinking. Um, uh, after studying uh, Oaspe in depth, uh, you know, studying the the historical portions of Oaspe uh, in depth, it becomes pretty clear uh, that uh, the human race um, got its technologies. It didn't, you know. The human race did not uh, think up its own technology. No, the, no. the whole early history of the thing is that we uh, we got it through the little people who got it through their mentors, who were more advanced beings in the spirit world. Um, and by the same token, uh, I feel that um, uh, the books I've written, uh, the knowledge I've been able to uh, put together, I... I, I I could never have done it without uh, Oaspe because that's the uh, guiding light. So um, my final conclusion is that um, I think the human race is uh, fooling fooling itself. Uh, I We can do all kinds of nifty things with technology now, and we've gotten very conceited about it, but we're going to end up in the mud anyway. <laughs> uh, but but uh, apart from that, uh, basically we need... Um, we need our uh, angelic uh, counterparts uh, to make progress on this earth. And that's going to become truer uh, in the years to come when everything really starts to collapse. We're, we're in a state of mid-collapse now, but not quite. You know, we're still you're hanging on. And, uh, mm-hmm. uh, but, oh, okay, but I'm not a doomster here. I'm not a doomsday no, no. or here. I'm saying a new time is coming. A new light is coming, but it will follow the collapse. Mm. Uh, and uh, around that time, we're going to get back to some basics. And one of them is that we are spiritual beings. We have never been anything but spiritual beings. And we, if we want to sit around and discount the power of the unseen, that's our business. But we're not going to make it through, and we're not going to find our destiny here on this planet without looking in that direction. Well, that's right. About every 10,000 years, we go through something very similar to this. The collapse of Atlantis was about getting more into materialism and technology and advanced technology and moving further and further away from our connection to the spirit world, our non-physical selves. We're there again. And in harmony with nature. Every time we start pulling away from the natural elements, our spiritual selves... (laughs) and them getting into the materialistic part too much, and it starts turning into greed, we end up effing things up. And I agree with you. We don't think you're a doomsday sayer at all. We feel like you're literally speaking a fact. Mm -hmm. And history is going to repeat itself again, and we want to be on the right side of it instead of the wrong side of it because it's going to happen anyway. So I'm glad I know how to, you know, start a fire. I'm glad I know how to pickle vegetables. (laughs) vegetables. <laughs> I'm glad I know how to till the land. I'm glad I love nature, and I'm so damn glad that I know how to connect with the non-physical world. It's true. Right on. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, we well we have just a few minutes left, and so far it's been such a, an amazing uh, journey with you. Uh, and one thing that I don't, we may have touched on it, it, it could just be my blonde way of thinking, but uh, you know, most most cultures they leave uh, you know um, uh, hieroglyphs or t- <laughs> tools or something. Now our generation is going to leave plastic. Yeah, plastic and cell phones. So uh, the little people did. Uh, is there is there a lot of hieroglyphs or or cave drawings of That's that a great era? Question. Oh yeah, um, some of the best uh, 
ones come from the man builders uh, in America, in North America. Um, there are some plates um, that are in the Little People book, and I took them right out of OWASP. They never uh, uh, discovered plates, and there's some stuff in Mexico uh, as well that uh, show um, uh, glyphs that are uh, at least uh, 24,000 years ago. Wow. You know, they can be traced back uh, to the continent of uh, Pan um, that uh, are, were uh, produced by uh, the little people. Um, it, it, you'll find them just uh, skimming through the book. Wow, I'm so excited. So uh, we want to repeat before we're ending up the interview here. So everyone, again, even if you're just tuning in or if you've been tuning in the whole time, we're speaking with Susan Martinez. She's the author of The Lost History of the Little People, Their Spiritually Advanced Civilization Around the World. And her other book is called The Lost Continent of Pan, which you, thank you for telling us about that and giving us a little sneak peek. Yeah, because it's not coming out until the end of this year, correct? Yeah, I think it's on the winter list. Well, I was I was just reading uh, on uh, innertraditions.com, and it has a, a picture of the book. It's a great cover, and just some little snippets of what the book's about. It it looks amazing, and we can't ha wait to have you back again to promote that book. Uh, oh, I'd love to. Yeah, this this has been like I said. This is what I love about doing this show. You know, learning from people like yourself that put the time and effort and energy into the research and you know your passion and just something you love to do because you know you don't have to do this. This is That's you know, right. and so it's it's great to to hear. I do. Oh, <laughs> you tell me. Tell me. <laughs> Yeah, well, I do I, have to do it. This is what I'm doing for the Great Spirit. They, oh, see, see, that's what I love. Yeah, but in that, and see, by correcting me, at least again, it it shows that you love what you do. Uh, so, people that if you just tuned in, you know, we just have two minutes left. Uh, if you tuned in halfway through, make sure you go and listen to this uh, podcast on iHeartRadio, iTunes, and watch our video uh, on our YouTube channel at uh, uh, on, our, on our, Truth Be Told with Tony and Eddie, uh, and, and subscribe. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think about uh, uh, the show and, and definitely about the uh, little people. We want to hear your thoughts uh, on it. And uh, this, this has been fun. And, Susan, we want to thank you. And please, please, please promise you'll come back again well if you invite me i'll come back oh don't worry <laughs> it's an open invitation all right Susan. well it, now i know i'm sending people to innertraditions.com to get your book is there any other locations that people can find you follow you look up your uh, books and and such um no i don't i don't even have an author website is that weird or what no no um I found you but anyway. Let me let me say I've got one coworker at this point. I mean, really, it's a very slim team for the creator at this point in time. But I've got that one uh, uh, coworker. He's a black guy. His name is Mike McGill, and he's got the most fantastic website called studyofawaspate.com. And there's so many topics that he tackles. He's like a, a genius. He's like a little genius who was just <laughs> sent to Earth uh, to do all, all this uh, work. He, he's done mathematical uh, puzzles that prove out uh, some of our propositions. Uh, so really, uh, if anybody's interested, wants to know a bit more, go to Mike's uh, website. Thank you. That's very generous of you to share that information. com. Well, thank you so much, Susan. We appreciate you. <laughs> okay, that's great. I, I really look forward to seeing you guys again. Oh, don't worry. We will. Our paths will cross. <laughs> All right, talk to you soon. Thank you. Good, good. All right, bye-bye. Yep. All right, well, we're going to take a break, and then we have another great guest on. Uh, Eddie, I love that woman. She's uh, she's fantastic and i love her passion for what she does i do too and i love that she has a phd behind her name yeah i thought about adding just adding a phd can you do that like per just purchase it no because <laughs> i always thought about you know going like you know change your name and doing it like king anthony sweet or something like that king well 
emperor, yeah, <laughs> high priest. <laughs> Wouldn't that be kind of funny? Yeah. Anyway, all right. So <laughs> we want you to go to truthbetoldwebtv.com and check out all our upcoming guests uh, next week. I know Eddie has a great bunch of people. <laughs> in. Great bunch of people, y'all. Well, and I, I'd have to look. I know it's Keith, and I think the other gentleman's name. I'm going to get it wrong. You booked it. I know, <laughs> but I've not met either of these gentlemen. I think it's Sean and Keith. Would okay. have to look All at right. truthbetoldwebtv.com. Yeah. I'm going to say go, Eddie. Go to truthbetold. As you can <laughs> tell, we fly by the seat of our pants here. Uh, that's right. All right. Well, we thank you guys uh, for this uh, episode. Always listen to all of our episodes. We really appreciate you doing that, supporting us. And uh, please give us your feedback. Tell us who you want us to have on the show. We love to hear it. Yeah, hear from we you. love new guests. Yes, we do. All right, so we're out of here, so stick around. We have our next guest. Yeah, cake in a minute. All right, be right back, and happy birthday, Eddie. Thanks. (laughs)